Okay, time for our last race of round two here at Circuit Park Berham. It is the KZ2 final. On the front row, it's going to be Kevin Stehauer versus Robin Glirum with Gil Mertens and Daniel Tenback on row two. Sam van Verskoyen and Farin Mega round out row three with Renzo Alibax, Arjun Jatik, Jano Otmir and Kern van Ginkel rounding out the top ten. Dan Sopfi and Olivier Hart round out the top 12 positions. Then after that, Rick Mews, Maxim Delure, Dirk van Ziftout, Enzo Boll, Nigel Hendricks, Jeffrey Fixer, uh, Jenstra uh, will be the last of the drivers to start, of course, Quint. Quinn Winkel, unfortunately uh, excluded through the uh, dangerous situation. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how these drivers get around the circuit. Uh, just for a quick attention in the paddock, of course, we were due to start the podium at 6.45 p.m. this uh, local time. That will be slightly delayed, obviously, with the, uh, the delays that we've had uh, so far. But thank you very much for your patience. As soon as I have all the results and we can get the podium underway, we'll get things started. Of course, there is, if there is a new location for the podium, we will let you know accordingly. Thank you for your attention. So we'll be giving out uh, trophies to the respective classes and also handing out the driver of the day award which has already been decided um, one of the criteria for those wondering if you are a chrono karting racer uh, no penalties is one of the big big points if you have no penalties and we decide you're the driver of the day and you have a penalty uh, you do not comply with what that is but it's also the fact that there are certain things the make up for it. However, one more race to go. Ah, right. We have got a cart. Oh, there's going to be another formation lap. We've got one cart that has decided not to comply. That cart has started up again. Ah, oh, right. So, there we go. So we are going around for another formation lap here at Circuit Park Berheim. So floodlights now illuminate this 1,100 metre circuit. So the drivers start lining up for the final time. Who is going to win KZ2? Let's find out. Green flag waves at the back. The grid is ready and ready to go racing. And it's now. The drivers make their way through. Great start by Robin Gleeran from the outside of the front row. One cart has not got going on the start grid. So as uh, someone goes a bit wide through out of turn number four, it was a CRG chassis. I think it might have been Jano Otmir actually in the 207. But you can see now wetsuits, clear visors. Arde Rigueur in KZ2, 12 minutes and 25 seconds, plus two additional laps. The spray, the rooster tails from the uh, Lecant wet weather tyres. I'm going to very much showcase uh, lack of visibility for the drivers. But 
Liram and Stehauer are leading the way. Uh, Jensra up from 19th and is now up into P15. There's Van Verskoylen battling away with Renzo Alibax. Uh, Farin Mega has dropped to 10th. As, oh, right, OK. Uh, Nigel Hendricks didn't get going, I think, possibly. Uh, Dan Zopfi, I think, might have been the driver that had a bit of a drama. But now the battle for the race lead has really heated up. Liram ahead of Stour. Gil Mertens in third. Daniel Tenback in fourth. Renzo Alibax in the 2 1 4 ahead of Sam van der Skuylen. That's the battle for P5. Olivier Hart up five places from 12th and is currently running P7. Uh, Un van Ginkel, uh, Arjun Jatic, uh, and Farin Mega now round out the top 10. So sunset due to happen in about. In about seven, to, well, around about quarter to seven local time, the uh, temperature has gone down 13 degrees. The humidity has gone up ever so slightly. It's now become a northwesterly wind of 11 kph. There's no clear room still keeping Sehauer at bay for the race lead and also the win. Uh, Thomas Cyprus was the driver that took the win at Genk. As you can see, the big difference between the DD, uh, the KZ2 Masters and now KZ2, whereby you have wet weather conditions that the drivers are now having to, but now able to comply with in terms of the rubber on the tyres under uh, that are attached to the, sh to the to the alloy to the wheels on the carts. So I think it, this gives you a real insight, and obviously with the the light's starting to fade here. It is going to be a case of just uh, getting through and then just, you know, just get yourself to the end of the race. And then at least you can breathe a sigh of relief and just go, OK, right. Look at what was a positive, look at what was a negative and hope that things might work a little bit more uh, in your favour for... Uh, the next round of the championship. But Robin Glerum now has a lead over Kevin Stehauer by four and a half tenths of a second. Renzo Alibax has now made up four positions and has got through on Gil Mertens to now take away that final step on the podium. So it is going to be a case of it's Glearing versus Stehauer for the race win, 100%. Then you've got to look at what could happen behind, what could be the battle for P3. So it's side by side between uh, Kuhn van Ginkel, Ginkel and uh, Farin Mega. Mega has got through, so that is a change for Knight for the young man uh, from Germany. But still... Stehauer, oh, got very, very close to the rear bumper of Glearham, coming through out of turn number four. So, very different atmosphere when we get to this point in the race day. And of course, a very different format to what we had at the opening round uh, at Genk on the 25th of February. Of course, there were quite, there was a big contingent of drivers. Of course, it was a joint collaboration between Chrono Karting and... Uh, team behind uh, the Belgian Max Challenge of the BNL Karting Series, Karting Genk. So, which is why we had north of 205 drivers here. We've got about 50 shy, but it's been great to see the paddock filled to bursting point and the atmosphere, despite the weather that was atrocious two days ago. It was, uh, from what I saw on social media, it was not that great, to be truthful. 
uh, especially for those that had off-track excursions. But that's par part for the course, you know, trait, you know, free practice is to get you ready and steal for the, um, you know, steal for what is what is actually happening. You know, so if you do have wet weather conditions to contend with, you know how the cart's going to react. You know how everything is going to work in its own right and how you can maximise that to your advantage. Still, it's very close. Uh, Enzo Boll has made his way up from 16th on the grid. Uh, was running very, very well in the opening, uh, the pre-final a little bit earlier on, but uh, drama where he got collected or when he had he had a moment of his own coming through out of turn 10 if I remember correctly and that would have been with Renzo Alibac so uh, Jeffrey Fixer trying to make his way up the order he's currently in P12 uh, Jano Otmir up to now well is now made some steady progress up the field having dropped all the way to the back end of it uh, now sits in 10th position having qualified uh, having Ended up ninth after the pre-final. So there's the uh, 219. All Sam Van Verscoil and got it a bit wrong coming out of the final corner. And Daniel Tenback has just got through. Uh, Korn van Ginkel has just pulled it into the pit lane. But things are closing up at the front end of the field. Because um, Kevin Stehauer is now 1.3 seconds ahead of Renzo Alibax. So this could be a very, very interesting development. Uh, fastest lap of the race so far, Enzo Boll in seventh, 55.038 from the young man, last year's uh, DD2 champion in uh, Corona Karting. But also, along with uh, fellow SP Motorsport teammate, Tom Bracken, making the move to uh, KZ2, and they're racing in quite a few different championships in this class. Liram still keeping that distance between himself and Stehauer to around about three and a half tenths of a second. Alibax is Six tenths off of P2. Oh, now this is looking rather, rather feisty, let's say. Alibax has just kept it nice and calm and composed. So is Gleerum, taking the lead off of Stehauer going through into turn one on the opening lap. Stehauer did not need to go that wide through turn five. Enzo Boll now passed through on Daniel Tenback. Um, right, let's see what the gap is between Enzo Boll, who's now made up ten positions and behind Renzo Alibax. That is, so call it 1.9 between Ball and Van Verstuylen. One point, let's call it 1.8, so that's 3.7 seconds. So 4.3 seconds, that is how far away Enzo Ball is charged, is, has the possibility of starting 16th and getting up 13 positions to possibly get a podium. That's how close it is. But Stehauer is coming under fire now. Alibax is there and waiting for the opportunity to get through. And oh, uh, Stehauer going, oh, a little bit of a bump between the pair. Gleerum is, is holding on to the race lead, but for how much longer? Stehauer got the opportunity to get through at six. We tried at five, got side by side with the 2-1-6 and then tried to do the old bump and run tactic and he's trying to do it here, he's got through Stehauer retakes the race lead and now Alibax up into second pass clear and through at turn 10 and my how the story has shifted into a new chapter so Gleerum after 10 laps was leading and on lap 11 he gets demoted down to the final step of the rostrum and I don't think we're done yet. Gil Mertens. And hang on a second. Look how close Enzo Boll is to the back of teammate Sam Van Verschoylen. And there is Alibax trying to f fend off Gleerum. There's Mertens. There's uh, 
Van Verschoyling. There's Bol. There's ten back as well. So um, this could be fruity to say the very least because we are fast running out of time. We're fast running out of daylight and laps. So this is very, very crucial what happens now. It's about crossing the T's, dotting the I's, not making any mistakes whatsoever. So Stehauer finds himself where he wants to be in the race lead and ahead of everybody else. The uh, welcome way to finish the weekend. Uh, Van Verschoyen is still ahead of Enzo Boll, and you can see they're pretty much on the same straightaway. The gap between first to sixth after 12 laps just under 3.6 seconds. Never say never, I, I'll tell you. Main reason being is that we don't know how it could all work out after this. So running at a 55, so three laps to go. Stehauer has got a lead. Mertens is on the verge of a possible podium. So Gleerum, I'm not too sure if Gleerum took too much out of those tyres early in the race because now he's struggling. You, you can't deny the fact that Enzo Boll is on a... Well, oh, someone's just gone straight on. And that... Oh, that's Gil Mertens! Gil Mertens straight on at turn five. Straight on. I did not expect that. Well, how, how's about that for another twist in the tail? It's got more, more twists, and, uh, twists and turns in the tail than the never-ending story, but there's the battle for the race lead. It's going to be down to the final two laps as Renzo Alibac sideways out of the final corner whilst leading. Briefly took the race lead from Kevin Stehauer. And then Stehauer just went, right, well, you've gone wide. I'm going to line it up on the inside of you. Job done. Don't count out Robin Gleerum. And then, look, not that far behind. Sam van Verschoyen and Enzo Boll, they are fourth and fifth. So there is a possibility that an SP Motorsport driver could pick up a podium in the final race of the day. But Stehauer has just kept his nose clean. He's just waited and bided his time. Gil Mertens straight on at turn five. I don't think, well, Gil Mertens, you could tell by the body language that things weren't exactly helping him out. But out of turn ten, well, Alibax gets the traction and, oh, something went off the cart. I'm not too sure what that was, but there was something that came off of, Gil, uh, off of Alibax's cart whether it might have been a bit a big a big bit of pickup. But now Stehauer's going to launch it up the inside of turn four. Oh dearie me, do not. I don't want to see a race ended by a late send. These wet weather conditions. Ah, right, we have got a cart stopped on the circuit. That is the 255. Oh, that's Enzo Boll. Enzo Boll is out. Dramas for the 255 as, oh, well, hang on a second. Stehauer just had a drama of his own there and he lost out second to Robin Gleerum. But hold the phone here. Renzo Alibax from seventh on the grid is now going to pick up the win in the KZ2 final. Out of the final quarter, the 214 does it. Gleerum takes second. Stehauer takes third. Van Verschoyen, 10 back. Ran at the top five. Jarno Opmid takes P6 in the wet. Started ninth, finished sixth. Uh, Olivier Hart, Farin Mega, Jens Troyer, and Jeffrey uh, Dreur, and Ye uh, Jeffrey Fixer ran out the top ten. Dirk van Sifthout, uh, Ajinyatic, uh, Nigel Hendricks rounded out the top 17. Enzo Bottle, the 17 that finished the race. Uh, we are just waiting. Well, Gil Mertens comes across the line. Unfortunately, 13th for the 234. Maxim Delua in 14th. Dan Zopfi, and last but by certainly no means least, we're going to wait for Rick Newers to come across the line. 
uh, unless it was, well, there is Rick Muirs in the number 204 across the line. And that, as they say, is that. But Renzo Alibax provisionally is your KZ2 winner of the final. There are your results on your screen, which I've just gone through just a moment ago. Uh, there has been a uh, post-race penalty. Ah, Sam Van Verschoylen. I did say possibly an SP Motorsport car might pick up a penalty. Unsportsmanlike driving from Kevin Stehauer puts the 211 off the podium, promotes Van Verschoylen to third, 10 back to fourth. But Alibax picks up the last race win of this meeting.